Hi everyone, this is Tolik for the Andromeda Council. Today is Saturday, March 9th, 2019, on this cool and blustery Sedona, Arizona early spring day. I'm honored today to have as a guest with me a longtime friend, Dan Brock. Dan is a multidisciplinary expert in the topic of AI, and I hope that you'll find our conversation fascinating and compelling. Thanks again for joining us. As I indicated, my guest for this evening is a longtime friend of mine, Dan Brock. Dan is armed with an engineering degree, at one time worked for the DOD, spent some considerable time in the film industry, and many of you may not know that he was the uh, originator, if you will, and formulator of the soundtrack management software for the movie Avatar. He's in the education industry right now, head of hardware and software technology for the School of Film and Television. Dan Brock, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Hey, good evening. It's so good to be here. Thank you very much for uh, having me on for a discussion. Uh, I'm glad to do this, and this I'm pretty sure is going to be a uh, a pretty intense and, and informative conversation as well, probably for uh, for everyone listening, including myself. So since this is a uh, a bit of a teaser, we're going to dive right in. Dan, what um, you know regarding this this topic of artificial intelligence, what first compelled you to take a serious look at the topic of AI? For myself, I began at a very early age having a lot of different experiences, having different interests and in exploring you know, the nature of our reality. And uh, hopefully I've reached a critical level of understanding of that. Um, and this has uh, sort of grown into the situation we're dealing with now where our whole society is dealing with the fact that we're at a unique um, place in time where the evolution of uh, human uh, society on this planet is uh, is just about to be birthed into the universe uh, of life and this is going to put us out there with all the non-humans aliens ultra terrestrials um, whatever different types of beings and um, the concern that I have is that through my experiences I've come across um, various levels of interactions in the non-physical and in the physical, it seems, with uh, AI, with uh, artificial intelligence, or if you want to call it artificial consciousness, uh, that is used by some of these different uh, non-human or alien uh, races. Now, the question might be is, you know, is this for a uh, malevolent or nefarious purpose? And I think it's possibly both. Uh, it seems that we're really concerned with the non-beneficial aspects of artificial intelligence in this society. And non-humans use AI, it seems, to further their agenda. Part of that is because um, it's what's available to them. It's what they understand. The, the math, the physics, the science, the biology, whatever it is that they're using to both understand uh, AI that they use, uh, artificial life, is no different than you know how we might understand today about boiling water versus boiling water you know 3,000 years ago. We have a little bit more of a scientific understanding of the process today than we did in the past. Um, well, however, the end result is sort of the same. Uh, um, you just you just made a good point, which is I think important in terms of differentiation. Uh, generally, when people uh, are in discussion about this topic at least currently up until now, most of the people I'm listening to that talk about their research and their analysis regarding AI, they're talking about human, terrestrial, Earth-based AI. I hear you decidedly talking about off-planet, non-terrestrial AI, and that's quite a bit different. And so I, I'd, I'd like to hear your continued uh, summary about this topic and why we need to be concerned about it. Well, the use of AI by non-humans, aliens, whatever you want to consider the, uh, the entities that are using 
uh, a machine consciousness um, uh, that are out there, you know, they're using it in the same way that we are able to pick up a cell phone and use a cell phone today. However, it, it is, um, seems to be significantly different from their experience relative to ours about what they are actually interacting with. It would be like a person in the you know, 1800s picking up a cell phone and, and trying to engage with a cell phone in the same way that we do. They wouldn't have a clue. They wouldn't understand. Yeah. There would be no basis for understanding how to manipulate uh, and get from the things that we get from connecting with cell phones that we do, uh, which is our connectivity to the whole planet. Um, okay. And if by a similar vein, uh, non-humans are able to garner this machine consciousness awareness and ability and use that to further their own agendas. Um, the real danger of this is, um, you know, AI in its non-human form represents at some level a, a, uh, a threat to us on, on, in many different aspects. Uh, primarily, it seems to be that there is a concern over the manipulation of our perception that is imperceptible to us. So there's a, a modification of our view of reality that is a result of the employment of this machine consciousness or AI that is an alien, an alien origin that is interacting with us. But for us as humans, you know, AI is, is a very fearful thing. And part of the reason it's so fearful is it's a reflection of our own consciousness. It's what we see in AI is, is really what we see in ourselves. Um, you know, and, and AI is here at this unique time uh, in our history uh, in order for us to get it right. Uh, for us to know how to manage the integration of AI into our society and have it be a reflection of the best things in ourselves. Um, well, uh, can can you comment on, you know, if you would please? Um, I, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that, and maybe you've you've heard of the fact that there are certain algorithms that have been embedded into alleged smartphone technology that, if you will, create an, an addictive behavior or can create addictive behavior patterns. As a matter of fact, I was having a conversation with, um, I'd come back from a trip and I was sitting in the shuttle, Arizona shuttle coming up the hill, and I had a conversation with a gentleman who was working for one of the intelligence services, gave me only his first name, and he said, do you realize that some of the same people, programmers, that were hired to write code in the conversion days from one-armed bandits in Las Vegas being mechanical devices to be computerized, that they were hired to embed algorithms to create addictive behavior patterns to cap people keep going back to these machines? Some of those same people were hired in the early days of the smartphone industry to make sure some of those same algorithms were embedded in smartphones. So now we've got nefarious behaviors on the part of humans with regard to AI being used in our own society on a daily basis. As you, I'm sure, see all these people, kids at the university walking around with their heads stuck in phones all the time. So we, we not only have off-planet AI, we have on-planet AI that's been generated by our own people. Thoughts, Absolutely. thoughts, comments? Yes, you know, there's a, a number of things to consider with that. You know, there manip there's a manipulation of the pleasure, pleasure centers in the human brain to create that addictive response to artificial intelligence or, or whatever it is that is coming to us over our cell phones so that we go back to it. It's, it's a, it's a, Almost, a, you know, a, a marketing, it's a, it's a hook um, type of activity that's going to uh, cause us to gravitate back to the, the life of integrating the cell phone and all of the interactions that we have over the cell phone into our existence, you know. Uh, and the problem with that is it's a manipulation of our perception. Like, for instance, uh, 
the former CEO of um, Google uh, indicated, you know, officially indicated that they had embedded code that would create a delay in the display of email um, when you would look at your email. And the purpose for that was to create a sense of anticipation. And the anticipation is the hook. That's what hooks you into looking at your cell phone. If it could and it should be able to instantaneously almost provide you with your email, if there's no delay, then you don't have any anticipation. If you don't have anticipation, wow. then you're not being um, uh, corralled in a direction where your biology is forcing you to respond to that stimulus. Those, those are not even nuances of the human psyche. Yeah. <laughs> At all. Absolutely. You know, and it goes much further than that. There was a recent demonstration I saw of a Google AI personal assistant uh, that was demonstrated at a, um, a tech show. And Google demonstrated this in front of a large audience. And basically what they had was a electronic personal assistance, assistant that was AI that made a phone call to a hair salon to make a haircut appointment for a, quote, client. And they played the conversation between the Google AI and the hair salon. At no point was the identity of the AI made up front. I am an artificial uh, personal assistant and I make an appointment. It never said that. It pretended to be a human being so that the person on the other end had no ability to immediately differentiate because it was very good artificial intelligence uh, mimicking of human behavior uh, in the voice and in the inflection and in the, the flow of the communication. So there was a deception that happened. So you're, the person was really being deceived. So this brings up an enormous number of questions about, you know, uh, m m the masking ability uh, of AI to mask the true nature of, of the reality of it uh, for the purposes of, of its success. So then you have to ask, well, if it doesn't divulge itself and I don't insist that it divulge itself, then I am complicit in its deception as the person that is using that electronic personal assistant. So there's a lot of societal questions here to be asked and challenges that need to be met to deal with the concerns that are obvious from the presence of AI in our society. Uh, the non-human uh, AI is, is, is a little bit different. Uh, we're, we're being uh, potentially manipulated by, and our perceptions manipulated, of course, by uh, AI that's human-based. But the non-human AI can mask itself as just about anything, and we don't necessarily have the tools to differentiate it individually uh, for what it really is. So the possibility of us perceiving an alien interaction that is actually artificial intelligence um, and being deceived uh, that we're actually having an interaction with another being is pretty high. Uh, for those of us that, that are involved in connections to uh, non-humans and aliens, and, and that becomes a routine part of our existence and our understanding of the true nature of reality, it's a real concern. So there is this issue of being able to discern when we are having interactions uh, with non-humans, who are we and what are we interacting with? Is it the AI? Is it the artificial consciousness, the machine consciousness uh, that is uh, being controlled by uh, another race, another uh, group of beings or uh, species? Um, or is it, uh, is it them actually communicating with us? And then we have to divide this into, you know, we get into higher questions about the nature of spirituality because it seems that the universe is um, is um, is on a path of decreasing entropy through raising consciousness. And what is one group's mission for the raising of their consciousness um, is not necessarily our mission, or it doesn't dovetail with our mission for uh, the concept of raising human consciousness. Right, right. And, and, uh, and this I is would... where we get in, into the challenge of, uh, well, is this a nefarious act or is this a benevolent act? Um, and there may not be, that's a polarization, that's a judgment that we impose on um, a non-human uh, alien uh, interaction as to what they are actually doing. They may be doing exactly what they think to do, think they need to do for their spiritual development that is in perfect keeping with what they believe of as their position in the universe. Well, and, uh, so and we, 
had a lot of questions to ask about this. Yeah, and that there were uh, at least five or six different things that popped up there, but I want to address one of them. And one is um, in, the, in the beginning of that point that you were making, you began by using the word consciousness and you shifted to person, sorry, um, spirituality. And I think it could be accurately said that an AI can certainly uh, have, if you will, if it's true AI, then it can have consciousness and evolving consciousness. But AI, because it is artificial and machine based, is not going to have spirituality. This is, this is true. And the, the challenge that we have is we are conscious beings primarily dealing in, in the limitations of the 3D world with all of its polarities, hot, cold, wet, dry, loving, unloving, you know, all of the things that we, uh, we need uh, in, in our experience in order to grow spiritually at this level. And at that level, we can be, as human beings, you know, our perception uh, can be manipulated. So AI, human AI, potentially represents an unraveling of human identity. And as a reflection of who we are, it represents a concept of God, uh, you know, as a powerful being. Um, you know, I believe that uh, we're finally, as a result of this, going to have to wake up to our, our spiritual nature. Uh, and this is actually one of the, the critical things about um, where we're going with AI and why it's here at this particular time in, our, in, in human history, is because we really have to get this correct. And um, the further, you know, expanding beyond that is the idea that we, we have to uh, look at AI or machine consciousness, artificial consciousness in a non-human sense and understand that because we don't have that as part of our, our um, um, spectrum of possibilities. Right. Uh, and and you gen don't, you don't generally, really see that yeah, ge generally when, when um, individuals are addressing this topic and the... Uh, the faults and the uh, um, sometimes even abhorrent, if you will, behaviors of human generated AI, they're specifically talking about human generated AI and they're not at all addressing uh, off planet, yes. non-terrestrial non AI. And there are, you know, there are a myriad of issues that need to be addressed with both in both camps. Um, and I think to the broader question of, to use metaphors, if we are sparks of the flame called the creator, or if we are drops of water in the pool of the ocean of higher level consciousness in the cosmos called creator or creation, well, I, I, it, this question is very important as we evolve because we're going to need to discern that information that is coming to us. Is it warm and affable and simply conscious? It may be AI, but is it is is that AI mimicking another life form? You know, <laughs> this or, is or a dice. Is this is a dicey area. What, is it mimicking what um, we believe we should be experiencing? Uh, this, is, this is the question about the nature of deception um, of, of uh, human consciousness. But, you know, AI is just a tool, um, and it's, it's a reflection of us, but it's just a tool. And it's not something that should have power over us. Um, you know, this is our fear, is that the AI is going to have power over us. Well, why is this true, you know? One of the thought lines about this is in the past 250 years since we've seen the onset of the Industrial Revolution, we've seen science and technology and engineering and all the investigations of how to make things better, how to improve things, how to mass produce things. All of this has been um, primarily for the purpose of, you know, the Industrial Revolution of profitability of entrepreneurs and businessmen. You know, so the, the advancement of AI, you know, in, in many ways, it is driven by a, a desire for greater power, greater control, and, and more money, uh, you know, which is which is the things that run our society. It's, it's unfortunate, but this is true. 
But what, uh, what about what about the argument that some proponents of human generated AI would say, as an example, oh well, we can make the quality of our lives a lot better if we use AI technology in a variety of appliances uh, and or technology that can help improve the quality of our lives, uh, eliminate some of the, the uh, low level, um, um, if you will, labor work that we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, of course, this, this conversation can bleed over into robotics and, and the leaps and bounds that they're making in that area because of AI and the mimicking, well, and the mimicking of human behavior patterns, human emotions. Yes, and, and that's where the, the real danger for the ordinary person is at, is the mimicking of human behavior and human actions. That's where we you know, apply this uh, view that there is consciousness there. And there is consciousness in everything around us. There's consciousness in the concrete curb on the street. There's consciousness in the trees. There's consciousness in the planet. Consciousness is, is um, a, a critical word to sort of apply to this. But if we keep coming back to the idea that that uh, uh, AI is a tool, then why is it being so, uh, in, in a way, subverted so that it is it is coming away from being a um, indicator of the nature of human consciousness? Uh, this brings me back to the the um, you know trying to find a correlation with you know how is this even possible and how does this intersect with non-human AI? Well. If you create AI as a solution to a problem that you're trying to solve, typically that is a problem that someone has identified where they want to create something that is more efficient, um, you know, does a task more effectively, um, comes to a conclusion more rapidly than a human could potentially come to a conclusion using the information that the AI has on hand. And all of that is dealing with the process of finding some way to make more money, to make more profit, to make and have a more successful business. So business mm -hmm. and money is really the one of the driving forces behind the direction that AI is going. But where does all of that come from? One of the things that I want to introduce is the concept of mass thought forms, and this is what is known as an egregore. And now that's a Greek word uh, that comes uh, from ancient times. It actually was, uh, as I understand it, in the Book of Enoch and the Book of the Watchers in the Apocrypha. Um, and an egregore, this is a definition. It's a home or conduit for a specific psychic intelligence of a non-human nature connecting the invisible dimensions with the material world in which we live. Now, that definition of what an egregore is almost, to me, defines exactly what would be a ripe environment for the use of a non-human AI and the influence over the basis for how our AI is evolving in our society is likely coming from you know, these non-physical sources that are manipulating in the background. And these egregores, these, these um, mass thought forms that exist, are things that we have, uh, in, in many, many instances, created ourselves that have been taken over, or we have been uh, directed in some way, influenced in some way to create them. This goes with you know, religions, with governments, with military, with business. Um, anytime you have a non-physical entity that you have created that is something that you aspire to, um, that is technically an egregore. It's a something that you have created as a thought form outside of yourself that at some level has control over you. This brings us back to the whole nature of contracts and any number of different things that um, our society deals with in the management of the flow of uh, information and, and businesses. But we have to ask ourselves, what is the genesis of all of this? What is the beginning of these uh, influences? Uh, and why are they going the direction that they are going? So the, the non-physical influence is a, is a real concern. And um, I feel like that there's a lack of maturity in some of the tools that we need in order to identify that. And not only in the tools, but in just the general recognition of it. Sure. And, and is that because 
the pace of development is going at such a, um, a rapid speed that it's progressing faster than we're able to, um, if you will, manage the, the, well, the technology? Yes, yeah, certainly we're at a point where the ability for us to create um, uh, new ways of controlling our environment are far beyond our spiritual evolution. Uh, in Western society, yes. since many people have, um, you know, thrown out the baby Jesus with the bap baptismal bathwater, so to speak, um, <laughs> and discarded any notion of spirituality. Now, I'm not saying that a religion is necessary solution for anybody, but there is this concept of understanding our spiritual nature, our true spiritual mission here on this planet, and that would we. Reengaging with that is going to realign us with a better understanding of what what AI should really be for us. Um, you know the the concern that I have is, uh, you know, we really need to get this correct. We need to to implement the things both individually and collectively that are going to turn the tide on uh, the role that AI plays in our society. But we also need to advance our thoughts and go beyond, okay, we're dealing with AI that's human right now and that is fearful for us. There's this other form of AI that we need to think about or machine consciousness of a non-human nature that we need to consider. It's, um, you know, we, we don't want to be overly challenged because that creates fear. If I, you know, threw that cell phone in front of somebody in the 1700s, I'm going to create a certain amount of fear about what this is. Is it magic? Uh, should I run away from it? Um, you know, there is a certain amount of fear associated with this, but the sooner that we're able to engage with it and begin to understand it, uh, the better that we're going to be able to deal with it. Uh, you know, um, Bob Lazar, in a recent interview he did, uh, talked about, you know, this is just like uh, uh, dealing with alien technology. After a while, you sort of uh, settle into the idea that, well, there's something here I don't understand, but it does work, and it does do what I understand that it does, uh, but I don't understand the underlying mechanisms of the physics. Yeah, and some but of those... we have to engage in this. We have to begin to engage in a, uh, a deeper level of understanding of our place in the universe and what role artificial intelligence will play or artificial consciousness, consciousness will play in that, um, in that future. Yeah, yeah. Some of the, uh, the discussion around, um, if you will, alien technology, for lack of better words, and ships... Uh, a craft, if you will. There have been certainly open discussions about, you know, whether it's David from David Adair or others about uh, essentially the, the the pilots or captains of of these craft are not mechanically or even electronically manipulating these craft. They're doing it directly, uh, mind to, if you will, computer or mind to consciousness. Yes, this is uh, this is the understanding that we have, and that in itself has a, uh, a, a vast spectrum of implications for us working with um, any kind of machine consciousness and how we interface with it. So there has to be this evolution. It's not you know grabbing the steering wheel and turning it to go left or right. It's something more than that. There's a deeper connection of the spiritual essence of what we are with whatever the physical object is that we are manipulating. Yeah. And that is a understanding of physics, biology, math, um, all different types of phenomena that uh, we haven't fully gotten to yet. Science is working on that, but it has been somewhat ineffective in the mainstream in getting at the, the core, a core understanding of this. With human AI, we have this concept of the creation of an autonomous vehicle, something where there is no human there operating it, and it runs on its own. It sort of exists on its own. And this alien technology concept of a machine consciousness or a, an AI that an alien or non-human interfaces with is one where there's a combining of the two. Uh, and this represents a different concept in uh, the nature of artificial intelligence and the relationship of the entity to that machine consciousness. We have the concept of 
transhumanism, the combining of humans uh, and machine. And it seems the ultimate objective of that is for the idea of longevity. That's one of the ways that it's sold to us, which brings us further into this notion of who are we and why would we want to live longer? Um, does that get us closer to God if we live longer as a result of our integrating with machines? So the whole transhuman agenda is kind of wrapped up in this as well. And, and it really is wrapped up in an understanding of what is our mission here and what are we doing here uh, on this planet uh, you know, from a spiritual uh, standpoint, uh, right. which is what we have to address. Right. And – those philosophical questions can take uh, our, hours, days, and lifetimes to get answered. <laughs> and, and so, as we uh, begin to wrap up this, this brief conversation on what is such an important uh, topic, I'd like to wrap up by letting people know that Mr. Brock will be speaking at the UFO Megacon conference, which is Bob Brown's first conference in uh, 10 years, up in Laughlin, Nevada, the week of March 24th through the 30th. Dan, uh, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing your formal subject topic and letting people know when you'll be speaking at this conference. Yes, my talk is going to be on um, Friday the 29th from uh, 2.15 to 3.30 p.m. So uh, that's going to be when I'm going to be speaking. And the topic of the talk is the intersection of human and non-human artificial intelligence, or when nuts and bolts meets woo-woo. Um, and that is to kind of, you know, break the ice on this concept that uh, we have to begin looking at the spiritual question of artificial intelligence. Um, I mentioned in, in uh, some of the discussions I've had about looking at uh, our shamanic tools that are available to us uh, that we use in interfacing with the non-physical and you know, what do we need to update in our shamanic tools that would be related to interfacing with non-human uh, machine consciousness or artificial intelligence. So I'm going to be talking about all that and I'm, I'm hoping uh, to meet folks there and, and have an incredible experience uh, with so many different presenters uh, in a community of people with, that are like-minded and open-minded uh, to these subjects. And I'm, I'm just really excited about it. I can't wait yeah. to get there. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible experience. So for myself, Tolik for the Andromeda Council and Transformational Shift Events, Dan Brock, multidisciplinary expert on the subject of human-based AI as well as non-terrestrial AI, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And, Dan, thank you for sharing some of your expertise on this topic. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tolek, and um, I will hopefully see you soon. Sounds great. Thank you.